Okay, having gone through the jargon, the various terms that are related here, uh, I'm once again, we do risk assessment, analysis, management, uh, well, particularly the analysis part, uh, to justify the implementation of the countermeasures. Again, what is our asset? What are our assets? A uh, variety of assets and what uh, types of protections do they need? Uh, how thoroughly do they need to be protected? You know, wh where is the remediation? Oh, ah, uh, residual risk. Um, yeah, I, once again, uh, pointing out that no protection is 100%. Um, any countermeasures that we do implement or have implemented in the past are continuing. Um, that will reduce the risk somewhat. At least, hopefully. I mean, you know, if, if it doesn't reduce the risk, why are we doing it? Uh, which is, you know, basically the point of the analysis. Um, but uh, there is some residual risk. There is some risk left over. Some that we have not uh, completely covered. So what do we need to do about that? Are there additional controls and countermeasures that we need to uh, address, implement in order to ensure or, or reduce the, the risk still further? So reducing the, uh, the risk to a, an acceptable, a tolerable level. Uh, and again, you know, that, that is going to depend on, on the asset, how important the asset is to us. Uh, what do we need to do in that regard? So, now, how do we do this? How do we do this analysis? How, how do we figure this out? Uh, you know, what do we do in, in the management part? You know, what... Uh, safeguards, countermeasures, controls are we needing to put in place to mitigate or remediate the risk in a variety of ways. And I, there are entire books, of course, written on this topic, but they do tend to boil down to get everybody together Think of everything that can go wrong. And then think of what you're going to do about it. Uh, you know, that is reducing it to its simplest form. But that, that is the process. Now, around the process, we have uh, all kinds of uh, additional functions. Right up to something like Octave, which... Uh, I suppose I, I should have mentioned in the uh, security frameworks, it's, it's a risk management framework, uh, very complete, very thorough. Uh, please do not try this at home. Uh, you know, don't, don't do this unless you've got a corporation of like, you know, 5,000 employees and, and you've got a fairly sizable uh, security staff because it's a ton of work, the full octave. Now, there is the, the reduced program, Allegro, uh, which is, you know, it, uh, comes down to a, a manageable level, I would say. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, there, there is a risk in picking the wrong framework, in, in following the wrong procedure, in, in putting too much formality into a process which at, at heart does boil down to get everybody together, think of everything go wrong, and then what are you going to do about it? Um, but yes, you know, it, it should be uh, more formal than that in an awful lot of ways. Um, in regard to that first step, get everyone together, everyone includes, but is not limited to, your users. Everybody forgets the users. You know, think about the users. Think about when when you are putting controls and countermeasures and safeguards in place. Do 
you know, is, is that workable? Is that workable in a working environment? And to know what a working environment is, talk to the users. They're the ones who know. They're the ones who have to follow the policies that you put in place. Uh, but, you know, our, our technical people, our systems administrators, uh, auditors, of course. The, um, now, they can't be involved in the planning, but look at the audit reports that you have had over the years. Uh, you know, make sure that we have addressed the concerns that the auditors have brought to our attention. Usually at considerable expense. Um, our, our security officers, if you are fortunate enough to have a large enough staff. Uh, and uh, remember, not just the information security people, the physical security people too. Uh, they are um, the only other people in the organization who have uh, the same mindset that you have or should have. Uh, you know, the sort of professional paranoid. Um, anyways, operations, uh, people, um, you know, again, you know, these are the people who, who know how the things actually work and are your countermeasures, are your safeguards really safeguarding the organization? Are they preventing work from getting done? Uh, so, uh, there's going to be all kinds of records that we can look at. Uh, facility records, uh, the community records and information. Um, you know, law enforcement and local governments uh, may have information that is of value to you in this regard. Um, governments at a, a variety of levels. I mean, you know, the old joke about, you know, we're for, here from the government and we're here to help. But yeah, you know, that is what government is there for. And you know, use what you can. Uh, as I said, you know, about NIST. That's your tax dollars at work. You might as well use it. And for the non-Americans, that's not your tax dollars. That's the Americans' tax dollars at work. You might as well use it. It's free. Um, there are, uh, of course, the uh, uh, computer emergency response, uh, event response, incident response organizations. Um, they uh, uh, they put out information occasionally, and, and this is unfortunately not necessarily always available, and, and certainly sometimes you have to join the organization and pay to get access to the records. But, you know, like, like I say, uh, like the, the saying goes, learn from the mistakes of others. Um, you're never going to live long enough to make all of them yourself. So, uh, yeah, you know, find out what is happening to other people, um, what uh, they are, uh, the, the ways in which they are being, being attacked, uh, the ways in which they are defending themselves. Uh, you know, find out what the environment is, is like and, and follow all of that kind of good stuff. So, uh, all of that goes into risk analysis. <laughs>